The following episode of Makeup and Movies is rated PG-13. Parents strongly cautioned. Seriously, though, this movie is the worst. Hi, welcome to Makeup and Movies. I'm your host, Jennifer Coolidge. I'm just kidding, I don't know why I did that. Welcome to Makeup and Movies, your favorite series on the internet that you never know when is coming. So guys, who remembers Bring It On? Raise your hand. You know that cheerleading movie that came out in the year 2000? It basically appealed to like 14 year old girls and really weird adults. Funny enough, I went to see that movie with my aunt and uncle of all people. It was an okay time. You know, at that age, all I saw really was a cheerleading movie. My 11 year old eyes didn't really see the bigger picture. You know, the much heavier underlying themes of that movie, which deal with racial inequality, cultural appropriation, etc. But now 21 years later, the original Bring It On is still being talked about. Wait, did I just say 21 years later? later. Let's not even talk about that part. It's still being talked about 21 years later. I just read a bunch of articles on it when I was kind of doing research for the movie I'm reviewing today. Because this movie's take on all of these issues is still incredibly culturally relevant. Many people say that it actually aged pretty well. Personally, in my opinion, I think only some of it aged well. It's a little bit messy for me. I can't help it if my occasionally. However, underneath all of those dated locker room quips that didn't age well, you can still see a glimpse of what the original Bring It On was striving to be, which was this wholesome sort of just teen comedy that sparked important conversations. They're larger themes, but we did it in such a fun, campy way that, you know, kind of slid in the message. The same can't be said for the sequel. Z. Sorry, I'm putting emphasis on the z here because there was literally a million sequels. <laughs> sequel after sequel after sequel after sequel. Do you even call them sequels after like the second one? All I know is I got them all bundled into one DVD on Amazon for like six bucks. And so far, they all seem to be terrible. Most of them, including the one I'm reviewing today, were all of these like weirdly feeble attempts to kind of convey that same message that the first one conveyed, but they all just failed miserably. And by miserably, I mean, Miserably. I cannot have an interracial relationship. And at the very apex of this miserable garbage heap, we find this one. Bring it on. In it to win it. No, bring it on. All or nothing. Uh. Starring Solange Knowles, Hayden Panettiere, and this guy. <clears throat> so Bring It On All or Nothing was the straight to DVD sequel. I mean, threequel, because <laughs> it's the, the third one. It's the threequel to the original with double the body shaming. The girl's a cow. Double the racial stereotyping. Bite me, crouching tiger. The added bonus of Hayden Panettiere making weird noises. <laughs> and last but certainly not least, the infamous crumping. There's no way I'm gonna not laugh through this. So kids, Pull out your pom-poms and get ready for bring it on. All or nothing. I'll take nothing. <laughs> Today's episode of Makeup and Movies is brought to you by Audible. Do you love reading but hate looking at the tiny little letters? Do you want to hear an epic tale of friendship and adventure, but reading makes you fall asleep? <gasps> well, do I have the solution for you? At Audible, you can find the largest selection of audiobooks, ranging from bestsellers and new releases to celebrity memoirs, languages, business motivation, and more. Even original entertainment from top celebrity creators and thousands of popular binge-worthy podcasts. That's actually Nick's favorite thing to read on Audible is like memoirs written by rock stars like Flea. We had a great time reading Flea's autobiography, Anthony Kiedis, basically all the members of Red Hot Chili Peppers. And believe you me, it is a thousand percent easier having someone else read you a book than trying to read one yourself. I can't, I can't read. And I love how the app is laid out. Me and Nick share ours and it tells us how many credits we have to spend. You can pick up right where you left off, which is really cool. Ooh, this one right here we've also been loving is Anthony Bourdain's book. We've always loved a show, but hearing his experiences that you don't see on the show have been fascinating. And it's fun to listen to stuff together, like in the car. It gives you a lot to talk about. There is literally something for everybody on Audible. There are thousands of titles, especially with the new Plus catalog feature that has podcasts and everything. It's just such a nice way to kind of exercise your mind while you're doing something, you can multitask. Listen when you're taking a walk, when you're working out, when you're driving, when you're in your beautiful new bathtub. <laughs> 
guilty. <laughs> and it's a unique experience because you can listen to a story. Audible does offer podcasts, which are all the rage right now, but you ought to try sometime listening to like a thriller, a mystery. It makes the time pass like that. Like this one called Then She Was Gone. Hook, line, and sinker. I literally didn't even realize I was on the treadmill when I was listening to it. It's a beautiful thing. As a member of Audible, you will get one credit every month for any audiobook in their premium selection. Again, ranging from bestsellers, new releases, celebrity memoirs, just anything. And also as a member, you will get access to the popular Plus catalog which is filled with thousands and thousands of audiobooks, original entertainment, guided fitness, meditation, sleep tracks, so you can sleep better. <gasps> Ad-free versions of your favorite podcasts are all included with your membership so you can stream or download whatever you want. It's amazing. If you're looking for a way to sort of expand your horizons, maybe learn something new, instead of just mindless cat videos on YouTube, you can visit audible.com slash Jamie or text Jamie to 500, 500 by the way, you have to spell my name right, for your free 30-day trial. We're back with this weird stuff from Tarte. Found sealer. Don't know what it is. So the movie opens with a very odd homecoming dance where I guess the theme was fire. <laughs> the dance is lame. Everybody's moves are super aggressive. And we meet our protagonist, Brittany, and her not so bright boyfriend, Brad. Not so bright boyfriend, Brad. Say that five times fast. So Brittany and Brad get crowned as king and queen. Actually, Brittany gets crowned as like Literally everything. Homecoming queen, valedictorian, senior class president. And then naturally they all break out into an impromptu cheer. Five, six, seven, eight, okay, I was gonna wait to tell you guys this, but spoiler alert, this is all a dream, okay? Just like how in the original Bring It On movie it opens with a bad dream. They had to do it in this one too so you would know it was a sequel. I mean a threequel. It's really dumb, but at the same time, I was relieved to find out this was a dream because I was like, okay, you know what? I cheered in high school and we did not do this. <laughs> New brushes are just so beautiful. So anyway, they start their little roll call cheer. Roll call! Which is just this really cool thing that they do throughout the whole Bring It On franchise where the cheerleaders just like introduce themselves. In the first Bring It On, it was kind of like cute and fun and now it's just repetitive. This one is so awful. Instead of any of the girls doing anything like cute or clever when they introduce themselves, they just like say their names. Amber! 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 Is that all you could think of? I don't know, at least she did better than Sierra. Sierra! And really, they both actually did better than Brianna. Brianna! Oh, hell no! And you know, as terrible as those all were, they all did better than Britney. And everyone knows that I'm Britney. She put the emphasis on the wrong syllable. Anyway, it just keeps getting worse. The cheer ends up turning into just a hate on Britney cheer. Everybody starts hating on her bobos. Don't you think her blues look fake? What is... Can we just go back to spirit fingers instead of spitty fingers? So anyway, even the kids watching start joining in on this cheer. So Brittany's like, oh yeah, I'll show you. She rips off her homecoming queen crown and joins the other cheerleaders that are making fun of her. Her and this girl Winnie do this kind of we're mad at each other spin thing. It's going pretty well until Brittany farts. <laughs> Farted. I want to know what people who don't know that this was a dream are thinking during this part. I just imagine a bunch of 12 year olds being like, you know what? This was all very believable up until this exact moment. As if they could smell her fart from across the auditorium. Anyway, Brittany finally wakes up from the dream. She's like, I did not fart. I did not fart. <laughs> Thank you. That was funny, I'm not gonna lie. Well, believe me, Brittany, thanks to my editing skills and lack of maturity, I can assure you that you will fart again by the time this video is over. <laughs> Mark my words. I'm gonna try this cheek do from ColourPop. So again, Brittany has woken up in the middle of the class. The whole fire prom fart was a bad dream, but her embarrassment doesn't last long. She meets up with her besties in the hallway after class. They're taking a selfie while this 36 year old man's just kind of chilling there. There were so many 36 year olds in the background of this movie. Just 36 year old, 36 year old, 36 year old, I don't get it. So anywho, the girls are walking to cheer practice and we get our very first little glimpse into their dynamics. So this girl, Winnie, her BFF, is one of those, she's like a friend of me, you know? Like she's Britney's friend, technically, but she's real competitive and she's real resentful because Britney always wins everything and Winnie is always like second best, you know? Besides, is that the first time this Winnie's lost to you? Or the second or third? Oh, we get it! <laughs> 
<laughs> Comment down below which friend you were. Were you the winner friend or the resentful second bestie? This is so pretty, oh my gosh. Side note, this next little scene is irrelevant and dumb where the girls are getting coffee because their high school has a coffee cafe. But I noticed that the banner said diversity week. Where? Bitch, <laughs> where? The heck, it like made a constellation. So kids, we finally get to our first cheerleading practice and peeps are getting hurt. <laughs> that looked really real. <laughs> so then Brittany and Winnie and Amber start body shaming this girl, Brianna, who has a literal perfect body. If ever there was an argument for bulimia, it's Brianna's. How the times have changed. Like I can't say for sure, but I feel like this had to have been filmed before the Kardashians had their own show. 2007, so this was the year before. Kim K's curves took the world by storm. By the way guys, I don't know what I'm talking about usually, so just ignore me. Anyway, just to kind of touch on this a little bit more, I feel like this movie does this thing that a lot of movies at that time would do, where the body shaming thing is like part of the story and they kind of, they're trying to show like, this is wrong, don't do it, but yet in doing it, they're also kind of perpetuating it. Like I remember watching things like this in a lot of movies. It's also in the original Bring It On where they body shame. And as a young teenage girl, when I saw stuff like that, I always got this vibe that they were saying like, look, these girls are fat, but we don't say it out loud. You know, it's still kind of implying that if you're average size and you're not tiny, then there's a problem and someone might say something to you about it. Pacific Vista has never had a fat cheerleader. Anyway, Winnie kind of pressures Brittany into telling Brianna that she's fat. <laughs> that she needs to lose weight. Which she does because she, her character has no, she can't think for herself at all. Pacific Vest has never had a fat cheerleader. And I don't know, you know, I just felt like there was a missed opportunity here for Brianna to have a comeback. I would have had a comeback. Pacific Vest has never had a fat cheerleader. <sighs> yeah? Well, you have tons of breakage. Also, there's a ton of terrible audio overdubbing in this movie, which you guys know I love. But this scene was like the first time it's really stood out to me. That's exactly how I would have handled it. How I would have handled it. Why? We can do better than this, you guys. So Britt is driving home, listening to the radio, and on the radio she hears about this contest that's going on that's being hosted by none other than Rihanna. Now attention all high school cheerleaders, Rihanna is hosting an audition for her TV special. So Riri is holding auditions for her TV special. They don't really explain, but basically Rihanna needs a cheerleading squad to like star in her music video. So she gets home and she's trying to tell her very normal looking parents that her and her squad are gonna audition for Riri's TV special. But her parents, they have bad news. Brittany, your father lost his job. Her dad lost his job and therefore they have to move to Crenshaw Heights because her dad's company is relocating to Crenshaw Heights even though they just said he lost his job. Like, why not just say he got demoted? <laughs> anyway, Britt's freaking out. She doesn't want to go to Crenshaw Heights. I think Crenshaw Heights sounds neat. Sounds like maybe old Lady Crenshaw lives there. I don't know. Old Lady Crenshaw! Anyway, she's just freaking out. She's like, are you insane? I just made captain. Her mom consoles her. She's like, honey, you're blonde. Honey, you're blonde. You'll make plenty of friends. <laughs> While I do agree that being blonde is like, a friend magnet? That doesn't apply when you have so much breakage. Ah! I'm just teasing, I'm just, it's, it's just a little fun, you know? Okay, I have breakage too. <laughs> but it's just odd. As big of a deal as they make about Hay Hayden Panettiere's hair in this movie, you think they would have given her a deep conditioning treatment or something. It just reminds me of my days when I was a hairstylist and people would insist on bleach blonde highlights but then didn't want you to trim it because their boyfriend liked it long and they want it to grow, you know? And then they'd go home and flat iron it, flat iron the bleach without heat protector. <laughs> <laughs> I'm referring to myself when I'm describing this. So Brick goes back to school and like breaks the news to all her friends that she has to move, you know? It's a weird scene. First of all, this girl's real dumb. What are digits? <laughs> Sometimes I just wish that the dim-witted characters in movies could just be more like subtly dumb. I often feel like they're so overdone that it's not funny, you know? I also liked that the director made Brianna eat cupcakes the whole time this discussion's happening. <laughs> I could just see the director being like, hey, make sure that fatty has a hostess. D-A-M-N. Sierra, you're, you're not speaking I am, you're just spelling. This is the worst movie I've ever seen. So anywho, since Brittany has to leave and switch school, she has to appoint a different captain. So she appoints Winnie because of 
cheer law. And apparently cheer law also states that 16 year old Brittany after moving schools can never cheer again, ever in her whole life because that would make her a dreaded. A cheer whore. Correction, a chore. <laughs> well, anyway, Brittany goes ahead and makes the promise because there's just something about Winnie's face that just makes her lose the ability to think for herself. So they have this weird pom-pom bearing ceremony, which is exactly what it sounds like. When suddenly Brittany reconsiders. I can't do this. She's like, no, not my pom-poms. She makes weird noises. <laughs> They end up getting into this weird wrestling match while the background music is like, Oh, Brittany, you're so fun. <laughs> I love my name, Brittany. It's just all around weird, you know? This is a sad, cheerless day. So guys, we gotta take a short break while I finish this eyeliner. And when we come back, Brittany arrives at her new school. See you there. We're back and this little palette from Sigma uh, is amazing so far. All right, friends, so this is where the movie kind of starts to take a bit of a weird turn. Brittany has her first day at Crenshaw Heights, which is the underfunded inner city school in stark contrast to her very ritzy school. She pulls up with her hand all weird. She's cheer driving. We get some more really bad audio overdubbing in this scene. <laughs> So she gets out of the car and just completely freezes. She's like, whoa, these people don't look exactly like me. What am I doing here? I mean, they literally have her character act like she's never interacted with a black person before. Some of my best friends live next door to black people. And in turn, the Crenshaw students kind of act like they've never interacted with a white person before. What's she doing here? Maybe she's lost. I still don't really know what the writer's goal was when they focused so much dialogue on everyone's respective race. White girl. Once you go black, white girl, black people, white trash, Foster Flake in the house, white people, white girl, white people, white, white girl, crouching tiger. That's so racist. Unless the goal was just to say, hey, you know racial tension? It exists. That is the extent of this movie's underlying message. In fact, that should be its new tagline. Bring it on, all or nothing. Racial tension exists. <laughs> anyway, up walks Camille, played by Solange. Knowles, who you may know as Beyonce's little sister. I know her as the singer of the Proud Family theme song. Even when you start acting like a fool, you know I'm loving every single thing you do. Anyone else? In addition to Camille, we meet several other characters here. We meet Jesse, the crumper. Tyson, the sexual harasser. What? I mean, Tyson! Look, you put it out there. Carisha, who has the pigtail placement that I've always wanted. And Letty, who, like Amber, is just there. She's a good actress, she's great, but the writers just didn't give her much to say. Anyway, Tyson looks over and he spots Brittany, and he's like, hey, we finally got some snow on campus. Finally about to get some snow on campus. And at first I was like, oh, it's snowing? Where? Even my bird thought it was snowing. It's snowing. But then I realized snow was referring to Brittany because she's white. Get it? Yo, Pop-Tart, you got any black in you? No. You want some? If you haven't figured out already, I just want to forewarn you guys that you will not come out of this movie a better person. You will learn nothing. <laughs> this whole scene where Brittany ends up bumping into Camille, it just escalates into this uncomfortable exchange full of racial tension. Again, without a lesson, without any intelligent revelations. It's just uncomfortable. <laughs> Oh no, this girl didn't call you the N-word. Oh, I would never. Anyway, like I said, Camille and Brittany get off on the wrong foot right away. Brittany insults Camille's bag. Well, it's not like it's real. Camille calls Brittany a heifer. This little Barbie looking heifer. Heifer? <gasps> a heifer? Heifer? <laughs> I think she's related to Honey Daniels. So this whole scene just kind of sets the stage for the second act of the movie. I'm nervous just thinking about it, you guys. Let's all hold hands and trust each other. Okay, let's walk up the steps with our arms extended so as to not let our purse touch our bods. So later that day, Britt's getting her yummy lunch when suddenly Camille, Carisha, and Letty do an impromptu cheer in the cafeteria. And guess what kind of cheer it is? A roll call cheer. Shabuya! What is with the Bring It On franchise and Roll Call Cheers? Can we come up with some new material? I already know all the characters' names. Amber! Also, why does Letty's pant leg keep going up and down with each camera cut? Anyway, after the impromptu cheer ends, Camille reminds everybody that there's a pep rally after school. Pep rally after school! 
So Brittany does that typical awkward, I don't really know where to sit because I'm the new girl and it's my first day walk of shame through the cafeteria. Everybody's just glaring at her like she did something horribly wrong for existing. Finally finds a table full of girls she wants to sit with and they all just immediately get up. They're like, oh, we all suddenly have to poop. They leave all their trash. They leave their Pepsi can, rude. So Brittany whips out her phone. And at first I was so confused because it looked like her friends had like FaceTimed her, but it turns out they just sent her a video message. 2006, I feel like that was around the time when you were first starting to be able to do stuff like that. Like send your friends videos through text. What a time to be alive. Anyway, she opens it up and they're like, hey, hey Brittany, hey Brittany. Why did we say that twice? <laughs> Actually, this whole video message is just weird. Hey, how's your new school? Don't join a gang, at least not the first day. Anyway, after seeing her friends on the video, she's devastated, she starts crying. But I think she's also sad that that Pepsi can like miraculously disappeared. <gasps> hey, I just realized something. This is not the first movie I've reviewed with a disappearing soda in a high school cafeteria. Hey, where'd my soda go? <sighs> I eat it already? Yes, I think you ate your soda. Yeah. I'm telling you, all the movies are connected somehow. Somehow. Like Kevin Bacon. Hey, Brittany. So guys, Brittany is heading back to class when she straight up smokes her head on Jesse's locker. And it's very convincing. Oh, 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 oh. oh I just, I wanna talk to whoever directed this movie. Guy's name is Steve Rash. Why'd you do it like that, Steve? <laughs> anyway, Brittany dramatically falls to the ground and you know, makes a weird noise again. <laughs> Ew, she's also laying by a yucky stain. Anyway, the point of this scene is that Brittany meets Jesse and sparks fly. Don't touch me. He's a very smooth talker. Oh sh my bad, Jordy. And I wanted to pay attention to their conversation, but I just kept getting distracted by the fact that Britney's hair kept changing from sprawled out like a lion to like tucked behind her. Steve, get it together. So Britney attends the after school pep rally. Britney's watching, Jesse's crumping, the warriors are cheering. This guy's feeling it with his little glasses. Just, it looks like an okay time, but apparently it's not for Britney. She watches for a while, but then she's like, you know what, I'm out. I don't know if it's just cause she's like not really into crumping or if it's because they keep reusing the same move over and over. <laughs> Either way, she takes off, but Jesse takes a break and he chases her down. He's like, hey, are you coming to tryouts tomorrow? Because I like your body. Your biceps are as hard as a rock. Got a nice ass too. Brittany, this is what we call a red flag. She's not won over by the creepy compliment. She's like, no, I'm not coming to tryouts. But then Camille comes up and talks her into it. Miss Fancy Fingernail Shimmy Shimmy Lip Gloss Barbie. The next day. She just Let's everybody talk her into doing everything. So the next day, Brittany shows up for the cheerleading tryouts. And the tryouts are very unconventional. <laughs> I have been to my share of cheerleading tryouts, okay? I've done it like 10 times. There's always coaches. Where are all the teachers and coaches? and adults in general in this movie. We need more than just Britney's parents to make this believable. So Camille kind of narrows down the crowd by showing the minimum requirements to even try out for the squad. She's like, if you can't do this, don't even try. If you can't do this, don't even try. And definitely don't try out if you can't do this. <laughs> Yeah, that's right. Every single person on this high school cheerleading squad needs to know how to do 10 backflips in a row. Well, anyway, Brittany is not intimidated. She's like, oh yeah? Peep this. Round off, back handspring, twisty flip, hair flip. I can just hear the little split ends flying through the air at Camille's face. <laughs> anyway, after everybody's narrowed down, they're warming up. I really like how this guy stretches. And Camille shows everybody an eight count. And she's like, look, if you can't keep up with this choreography, you're cut. Well guys, not to worry, cause Brittany obviously picks it up immediately. I saw an interview with Hayden Panettiere where she talked about like preparing for this movie and said she trained for three weeks. Finally trained for three weeks. <laughs> I thought she was gonna say three months, but no, three weeks. It explains why she got the choreography instantly. One and two and three and four, five. Those three weeks really paid off. This was yet another scene where I wanted to pay attention and really like focus, but I was distracted by another cheer punch. 
lot of cheer punches in this movie. Well, like I said, Brittany gets the choreography, but then she puts her own very intimidating move at the end of it. One, two, three. Okay, Brittany, I wasn't convinced before, but now I know for sure that you're related to Honey. She even three fours it under her breath. Three and four, five. I'm just saying, it's a little late, but I want some ears on, okay? Yes. So reluctantly, Camille offers Brittany a spot on the squad. She cannot deny her raw talent. Vanilla latte got skills. Yeah. So she very graciously gets her attention. Hey, Barbie, it's Brittany. Cut, cut. Cut, Hayden, 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 can we try that again? Barbie. It's Brittany, bitch. That's more fun. Anyway, Brittany says no. She basically just showed up to prove that she could do it and then turns down their offer like a real queen. So the next day at the library, Letty and Carisha are trying to convince Camille to convince Brittany to be on the cheerleading squad. Camille, she's the only one with enough cheer experience. <clears throat> Cheer experience. I am the cheer tater here and I make all the cheer decisions. <laughs> so Camille's like, okay, fine. She goes up to Brittany and she's like, look, the way I see it, you have two choices. You can either join us and be on our squad or- I bitch from the bleachers by yourself. Okay, now what exactly does that mean? <laughs> Is Camille suggesting that Brittany take on the role of a football mom? Rip his head off! Seems like a tough choice. So Brittany gets home. She makes more weird noises. <sighs> She also kind of runs weird. Is somebody chasing you that we can't see? Her mommy helps her see that like, the girls from her old school, if they were real friends, they would never tell her that she could never cheer again, right? It's sensible advice. <gasps> anyway, she whines to her mommy, she falls into a large box, and then we're back at school. The cheerleaders are at practice and in walks Brittany, the snowflake. Lost the flake in the house. Tyson is immediately a creep. Camille says this. Everybody, this white girl's name is Brittany. Carisha's being nice at least. What little butt you do have. Brittany kind of like growls or something. It was weird, I don't know, it was weird. Anyway, they finally start dancing and doing some choreo. So Brittany finds out in a shocking turn of events that the Warriors are also planning on auditioning for Riri's TV special. What audition? The Rihanna TV special. We need them computers. And they don't just want to win, they really need to win because their school, like I said, is underfunded and they don't have computers or books or anything. And if you win Riri's competition, then your school gets all new computers. Meanwhile, the Pirates, you know, Brittany's old, friends. They're also working on their routine for the competition. And by working, I mean Winnie doing this weirdly sexual strip tease for this kid, Brittany's boyfriend. <laughs> <laughs> it's so cringe. I'm glad that this is meant to be a comedy because this is just so cringy to watch. All the other cheerleaders are just standing there watching her for what feels like five minutes. It was really hard for me to watch, but Brad really likes it. Huh? It's getting gross, guys. Getting gross. In fact, so gross that I need to take a break. And when we come back, it's crump time. See you there. Hey guys, we're back. We're back with this highlighter from Ofra called Samantha March. No, it's by Samantha March. It's called Start Inspired. You know, in the monitor, it just, it's too much. <laughs> the look is too much. I thought the eyes were gonna come out way more subtle than they did. Oh well. All right guys, so one day, Britney ship. I'm committed now. So one day, Brittany shows up for practice, but nobody's practicing because they're busy crumping. And for those of you who don't know what crumping is, allow me to read you the definition. Crumping is a style of dance that originated in the African-American community of South Central Los Angeles, California. It is intended as an outlet for anger and is a non-violent alternative to the street violence widespread in many of the areas where it is performed. Consequently, its dancing style is fast and aggressive. It usually involves physical contact between dancers, which can often look like a fight to outside However, the participants understand this to be part of the dance. That is to say, most participants, but not Brittany. She's freaking out. She's like, whoa, 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 guys, violence doesn't solve anything. And Jesse's like, relax, we're crumping. Now guys, it's very important for me that all of you know that I'm not about to make fun of this style of dancing as a whole, okay? But what I am gonna do is make fun of Hayden Panettiere doing it. <laughs> okay, white girl. So he and Tyson proceed to give her a little demo, an intro to crumping, if you will, and explain that it's just kind of like angry dancing. And Brittany really wants to try it, but she's like, I don't have have any anger. Well, no worries, Brittany. Tyson will get you real angry with some 
non-consensual grabbing <laughs> that they completely normalize in this movie. <laughs> anyway, he starts pestering her and stuff and she actually gets really mad. She starts swinging at him and while she's swinging at him, she's like, hey, I think I'm crumping. <laughs> what are we watching? <laughs> I feel like this scene went pretty viral on TikTok. <laughs> so you've probably already seen it, but what you might not know is that it just gets worse and worse. It turns into a full on <laughs> It turns into this full on crump off. I'm sorry. It turns into this full on crump off between Jesse and Brittany and boy is it crazy. <laughs> <laughs> Hardly watch it. It's so, so bad. <laughs> Brittany, you see, now his shirt's gonna have those like saggy, stretched out finger marks. So just when you think that Brittany won the crump off, Jesse comes through with the heartbeat moves. Uh, uh. <laughs> Again, I think crumping is a cool concept. Do I think it was executed well in this film by this actor at this moment? Heck to the no. <clears throat> I really like how everybody around them is acting so impressed. Tyson's like, Poppy's got skills. And Carisha says, Yeah, his moves are so next level. <clears throat> I wonder if I could crump. <laughs> anyway, Brittany likes the crumping so much that she suggests incorporating it into their audition for Rihanna's thing. So they put together this whole crump dance it rules. <laughs> That's right, y'all. You just got taken to Crump Town. You want some tea and crumpets? <laughs> I'll see myself out. Well, Camille watches it and she decides she doesn't want to go to Crump Town. Hell no. She hates it. She's like, no, 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 no. We're not gonna crump. But Brittany explains, she's like, look, Camille, a lot of your moves are illegal. You can't do that. <laughs> nah, girl, you can't do that. <laughs> <laughs> it is true. She can't do that. Camille doesn't care. She's like, we're not crumping. We're not going to crump down. <laughs> we're gonna risk getting disqualified and do the illegal moves instead. Bye. So later that night, Brad comes over to Britney's for DVDs and pizza. And the pizza shows up and Je Jesse is the delivery guy, which really scares Britney for some reason. She spills tea all over her face. Hey, you know what? You want some crumpets with that tea? Okay. I won't do that joke anymore. <laughs> anyway, this scene is completely pointless. I just wanted you to see Brittany making a weird noise again. <laughs> so meanwhile, Winnie can't go to school because she's zidious. So she skips school and she stays home and she's watching the news because that's what teenage girls watch when they stay home from school. Anyway, she sees the Warriors on TV talking about how they're gonna audition for Rihanna's TV special. Well, who does she see on the TV? But Brittany, who swore that she would never cheer again, guys, she's caught red-handed. So Winnie and the other pirates head up to Crenshaw Heights to confront Brittany. They go to their football game and that ditzy girl's like, how are we gonna find her? How are we gonna find her? Do you get it? Anyway, the pirates confront Brittany with a very intimidating cheer. B-R-I-T-N-E-Y. You ain't got no alibi. You're busted. Hell yeah, you're busted. They basically confront her to say, Nothing to say, we caught you. We're not friends anymore. And that's all. Winnie really carried this scene. She kept the comebacks coming. Hey, Brittany, you dropped something. What? Your face. <laughs> yeah, Brittany, you dropped your face. <laughs> that is literally my new favorite comeback. Well, Brittany's had enough. She's like, Winnie, what is your problem? I don't believe I have a problem. Oh, really? You don't believe you have a problem? I don't believe I have a problem. Why did she say it like that? So after this interaction with the pirates, Camille decides that she wants to go ahead and incorporate the crumping routine that Brittany and them came up with. She just, she really wants to beat him and crumping is the only way. So she asked Brittany to teach her the steps and Brittany is a little defensive. She's like, hello, I've been saying this the whole time. Carisha and Letty think that she's just crabby from like caffeine withdrawal. You know, I think it's caffeine withdrawal. Coffee's like crack to white people. That's not true, okay? I haven't had coffee in a week and I'm perfectly fine. Jesse does a weird laugh. <laughs> Jesse, there's a time and a place for your heartbeat crumping, okay? 
it's never. So guys, after 53 minutes, we finally get a montage. The warriors are crumping. The pirates are learning a dangerous move called the helicopter. Amber breaks her elbow, but then keeps stunting with a broken elbow. And then one day after the montage, Jesse takes Brittany to the rooftop and it gets weird. <laughs> Brittany immediately assumes that Jesse's parents are immigrants. Where did they immigrate from? Brooklyn. I don't <laughs> Whatever. And apart from that weirdness, it was a typical rooftop combo. You know that one from every tween movie where it's kind of like. <laughs> Everything looks better up here. <laughs> Everything looks better up here. What would an early 2000s tween rooftop romance scene be if the main character didn't go from giggling to looking off in the distance delivering her cheesy line? Anyway, their convo comes to a weird stop when Jesse goes in for a kiss. Jesse, I have a... Wait a minute, can we see that again? Jesse, I have a... Somebody get this girl an Oscar. She just can't talk at all in this scene. I have a... Boyfriend. The word is boyfriend. She runs home to put her curlers in her hair and call Amber. She bonks her head really hard. <laughs> That'll teach you to wear curlers after 1981. I'm just kidding, I'm just kidding, I'm just kidding, I'm just kidding. Also, I thought her and Amber weren't friends anymore, but whatever. Amber reminds her on the phone that that weekend is the homecoming dance. And Brittany is still supposed to go to her old school's homecoming with her boyfriend, Brad. Who? But her new friends can't know that she's going to her old school's homecoming. So she makes up this dramatic story about her dog dying and she has to have a funeral. You're having a funeral for a dog. He wasn't just a dog. Totes believable. White people are crazy about their pets. That's not true. Well guys, this lie obviously backfires because Camille and Jesse show up to Brittany's Friday night with a bunch of flowers to offer their condolences for her non-existent dead dog. And she's caught red handed in her homecoming dress. Who is at the... Dora. The word is door. Jesse and Brad get into a little verbal scuffle. Dude, you have a problem? Dude, step off. Dude, I will beat you down. Dudes, neither of you can act. And then Camille drops a bomb. She tells Brittany she's off the squad. And Brittany's like, oh God, no. Where will I crump now? I guess she'll have to crump at home or worse. She'll have to hit up her local crump stop. What's that say? Not a crump stop. <laughs> Hate those. So she goes to homecoming, but this time it's ice themed. And Brittany gets into this little argument with Brad and it just confused me. Is, is that why you started sneaking around with Winnie? So you knew he was cheating on you? and you still went to homecoming with him. I love when teenage girls in movies are just so mature and level-headed about their boyfriends cheating on them. Cause personally, I had a cheating boyfriend in high school and I was more like that girl from that TikTok video. We are over! I hope that you choke on a piece of concrete. They could at least make it a little more realistic. Anyway, Brittany ends up getting into an argument with Winnie because Winnie insults Carisha yet again, calling her fat when she has a literal perfect body. There is this one girl that is so fat, she looks like she swallowed two Brianna's. <laughs> now this is where Winnie's character really crosses the line from like typical annoying tween movie villain to incredibly racist supervillain. After you make friends with those people, the next thing you know you're gonna be on some bad talk show screaming at your baby daddy. That's so racist. Oh, bite me, crouching tiger. Again, to me, it's a little over the top. It just progressively gets worse. And you're such a and at the very least, what this accomplished, in my opinion, was if you didn't dislike her character before, you definitely dislike her now. So somehow it immediately goes from an escalating fight full of racial slurs to a cheer. That seems logical. When he tells the DJ to kill the music. Kill the music, Ronnie. Which he hears <laughs> from across the dance. That's almost as unbelievable as everybody in the auditorium smelling Britney's fart. Anyway, Winnie's like, okay guys, we interrupt your homecoming dance with a special surprise. Our ex-head cheerleader is here and she wants to do a cheer for you. And all the other students are totally on board. They're like, yes, we care about an ex-cheerleader. That's what we want to watch on our homecoming night. We don't need to dance. Where's Damien from Mean Girls when you need him? He doesn't even go here. Well guys, want to take a wild guess at what kind of cheer it is? It's Freaking roll call cheer. My name is Amber and I say hi. My name is Winnie and I say hi. Make it stop, make it stop. We don't, don't say hi anymore. Hi. Well, if you thought all that was bad, wait till they get to Britney's turn. Shabuya, sha, sha, sha. 
Shabuya, Shabuya, sha, sha, Shabuya, break it down now. I want. I want to see Hayden Panettiere react to this movie. I would literally pay to watch that because I think she's great and very funny. And I just want to see her reacting to the things that the directors made her do in this movie. Shabuya. I've never seen anything worse besides a pop star. Everyone is so impressed. Besides Winnie, of course. Winnie's like, oh man, that was really good. I've never seen such talent. But then Sierra comes up and <laughs> just watch. My name's Sierra. Like tears coming. Why didn't they have her finish? I feel like the editor just accidentally cut it out or something. This is the most fun I've ever had. So Brad wins Homecoming King. Winnie wins the prom queen. Brittany's like, you know what? I don't care. You guys deserve each other. I'm out. She's a changed woman. And by changed woman, I mean this. I can't make these things up, guys. She really thought if she rolled up her pant leg and put her hair in braids, that the warriors would take her back and let her do the audition. But shockingly, it doesn't work. See ya. And then Winnie comes up. It's hip hop Barbie and her Wu-Tang Clan. She gets into an argument with Britney. They kind of just insult each other for being white. A white girl, white trash. I'm not sure what's happening here. But what I do know is that if you're gonna call somebody white trash, they should at least fit the description. White trash. Hey, you know what? See? That makes more sense. Well, in the course of 10 seconds, Camille changes her mind and decides that Britney can cheer with them after all. Britney gets so excited. She's like, okay. And they used it twice. Oh, yeah. <laughs> all right. Okay. Jesse, on the other hand, is not excited. He's still very mad about the fake dog funeral and the fact that she let someone else condole her. But I see you've already been condoled. And then, it's finally time for the audition. I thought this was gonna be one of those things where they say the whole time that a celebrity is gonna be there, but there wasn't actually the budget for it, so you never see the celebrity, but that's not the case with this movie. Literal Rihanna is there. <sighs> How much did they pay you, Riri? By the way, Tyson, when he sees Rihanna, is just, just absolutely loses his mind. Oh my God, Can we see that again, Tyson? Oh <laughs> So Riri gives the rules of the competition. Each school get to perform their routine for the judges. Then the two best quads will come back and perform for me and I'll pick the winner. I wonder which two are gonna get it. So the competition starts. The warriors are up first. They're crumping, they're tossing. This girl almost falls. After they finish, they go backstage or whatever and the whole squad starts body shaming Carisha again. Our shit is tighter than Carisha's sports bra. <laughs> I'm no longer having fun. I mean, I, I'm kidding, I totally am. But seriously, who thought this movie was okay? So then the pirates go out there, they do their routine, it's boring. And when they finish, Brianna, you know, the fat girl, <laughs> passes out because she hasn't eaten. That stupid diet you've had her on. So Winnie has no other choice. She has to call and order a new cheerleader. I need a cheerleader. A skinny cheerleader. Because that's a thing. They get Brianna a Snickers bar, which she eats very gracefully. Fine now. Point of this scene being that Brittany apologizes to her, which is great. She makes amends with Jesse, which is also kind of great. She's like, hey Jesse, remember my shirt grabby move? There's more where that came from. And Jesse's like, yas, ruin this shirt too. Actually, that material looks a little bit stronger. So Rihanna comes up to announce the finalists, but not before weirdly saying goodbye to the judges. Now let's hear it from our fabulous judges, Tony G and Harry Potter. I just don't get why that scene was in there. Like if it hadn't been in there, I wouldn't have been like, hey, wait a minute. When did Riri get rid of those judges? I also like how she moves the mic away from her mouth to clap, but we can still hear her talking. Way to go, editing team. So backstage, they're all getting ready to perform their second routine with their vanilla glitter body spray and their glitter temples. Winnie makes a spur of the moment decision that the pirates are gonna do some very dangerous and very illegal stunts. And also Sierra tries to spray the glitter spray on her armpit. <laughs> so they come out onto the mat, they're ready to perform. This guy does a slidey move. He must have taken Honey's hip hop class at the Senna. So they start their routine and they do their cool new danger moves and Brittany and Camille are watching and they're like, oh, crap, 
you know, they realize they have to step up their game. So they come up with a new plan that they don't rehearse, they just say it verbally. <laughs> Punch up twice, arm circle, high V, hip thrust. I remember doing this exact thing when I was a cheerleader, or trying to anyway. We'd be on the sidelines and decide on a new move at the very last second before the halftime show, and we would just decide on these last second changes after you've been rehearsing for months. Go out there on the floor and only like 3% of the girls would do it. Those were the days. You have to actually rehearse changes, okay? You can't just be like, punch, punch up, up twice, twice arm, arm circle, circle, high, high V, hip, hip thrust. thrust. <laughs> It's not realistic. Well guys, I stand corrected because this method works for the warriors. In fact, it works so well that they walk up while the pirates are performing at the exact right second and start mirroring their choreographer to a T. And then it just turns into this big chaotic cheer off thing that nobody asked for. <laughs> Seriously, what is happening? How is this not against the rules? Uh oh, here comes the crumping. They literally crump the other squad off the mat. <laughs> the pirate girls are getting real scared. So then the warriors start their performance and I just loved how they were wearing like hoop earrings and all kinds of things that are completely illegal in cheerleading. It's against cheer law to have jewelry in. They could get ripped out of your ears, hello? Well, even though they straight up cheated, Rihanna doesn't care. She's all on the warrior side as if she knows that there was this weird rivalry. Sorry, but you don't make the rules. I do. Way to be diplomatic, Riri. The whole entire room, like the audience and everything, end up voting Winnie off as captain. <laughs> like Winnie's a jerk and all, okay, I hate her character, but nobody else there knows that. They're all acting like pack animals. <laughs> hey too, Rihanna? No, this is not fair. Look at them. They're so ghetto. <gasps> You know what, I take that back, it is completely fair. I too think Winnie should be voted off. Anywho, as you can probably guess, Rihanna declares the Warriors the winners. And the very last line of the movie are the two fat characters bonding over their love of Twinkies. Hey, you look like you eat Twinkies. I do, really? Yeah. You ever had a fry? No. I hate it. What on earth did I just watch? <laughs> oh, oops, 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 it's not over, it's not over, it's not over, I forgot. Then we're blessed with this incredibly weird green screen honeycomb version of Punda Replay by Rihanna. That's a different version with all the chaladas. Oh, no, it's not a green screen, it's a blue screen. Wait a minute. How is it that Rihanna can wear a blue top in front of a blue screen? Because do you wanna know what happens when I wear a green top in front of my green screen? I, 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 have, I have no body. So either that screen is not really blue or Rihanna's not really there. I'm gonna guess it's the latter. <laughs> The last thing that I think is very hilarious about this is that Hayden Panettiere's name is spelled wrong in the credits. A lot of people on this crew were asleep. So let's look up the budget really quick. Well, that figures I can't find the budget, neither on IMDb nor IMDb Pro. I can only imagine that it lost money, A, because it's terrible, and B, because it was straight to DVD. But let's take a look at one of my favorite reviews. This review comes from an IMDb user named That Guy Thumb, and it is entitled, Bury the Pom Poms, Please. This was terrible mean-spirited, and full of the worst cliches and racial stereotypes I've seen in a long time. Most of the set sequences look like they were filmed in cardboard boxes. What was up with that finale? And poor Rihanna was just plain exploited to get people to watch her act, which she can't. Look, I don't know that I agree with that. I feel like Rihanna's a good actress. It's hard to remember sometimes that just because a movie is terrible doesn't always mean the actor or actress is terrible, you know? Oh, here's another one, a monumental crap pile. So <laughs> that's that for me on this one. I don't, I don't think this one's gonna be a guilty pleasure for me. So far, I think out of this whole series, my guilty pleasures have just been the really wholesome ones like Mac and Me. I watched that with Romy and Adler a lot. Lizzie McGuire. And as much as I ripped on Honey, Honey is totally a guilty pleasure. I, I always end up like having some sort of affection for the movie after I do so much research on it and spend so much time going over it and over and over it in my head. I don't know about this one. I think it's just too much for me. <laughs> Let me know what you guys think. I get an absolute kick out of reading your opinions and comments. We need to figure something out to where I can get your commentary before, like maybe post in the community tab what movie I'm doing. We could all watch it together and then we could all discuss it. And I could put your comments. Oh my God, I just thought of a whole new spin on this series. Sorry, that was aggressive. <laughs> B aggressive B E. okay thanks again for your suggestions leave them down below as always say whatever you want to say air your grievances and i'll see you guys in the next one goodbye
Give Carla a kiss. I don't Wait. like Carla. Hey, Brittany. You say you want to lose control. Come over here. I got something to show you. For delicious definition, make them boys go loco. So anyway, Brittany finds out in a shocking turn of events that the Warriors also... Oh, boy. I just did 10 more minutes and wasn't recording. In fact, it works so well that they walk up to the pirates. In fact, it works so well that they walk up while the prof In fact, it works so well that they walk- Someone explained to me how she can say, hey, while making this face. Hey. Oh, I can do it. Yeah? Well, you have tons of breakage. <laughs> I think I moved too much with that one. What did you say I should do? <laughs> this? Start with anger. <laughs> 